Hi everyone, welcome to our show, whose name we don't have yet, but basically the premise of the show is to have conversations around life, be it relationships, marriage, purpose, career, be it money. So we have today Mr. Blessing who will introduce himself. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Mr. Blessing. I think that's the name that I've been called by for almost 15 years. <laughs> So I'm here basically as a speaker on the subjects that have been mentioned there. Um, I don't want to partition myself into a certain category. Yeah. Probably you will find me speaking into a certain space and uh, answering or responding as, as, as you expect. But for yeah. now, I think I'll leave it there. So the way Mr. Blessing and I met, he was my lecturer at BAC. And yeah, that's how we know each other. He taught me finance bridging and first year at Botswana Accountancy College and then we recently just connected on LinkedIn so we've been having that close relationship and that is why I love him to be my first guest and thank you so much for the opportunity thank you so much yes thank you so much so what do you say though about especially now about people pursuing uh, careers that are related to their passion well, I think um, there are two things that we need to identify. Mm. Um, a career and probably putting food on the table. It's a one conversation you can't run away from, especially in an African setup. Yeah. Because you find that we, we don't generally have a silver spoon given to us when we're born. We need to ask ourselves, how am I going to survive? Mm. And that's why you find that our parents would then say, no, you can't do that. You can't play music. You can't play the drums. I want you to focus on your books. Yeah. So the best would be a situation where someone focuses on a career, rather on a talent, but at the same time they don't neglect their academic, you know, studies. Mm. And and this is really happening out there. You want to go to Harvard or any of these um, Ivy League universities. You want a scholarship. They will look at what are your grades. I remember so many years ago. Mm, that's true. Um, following one of the top students in our country, I think they had got eight A stars or something like that. They had gone to Harvard. So, reading further, I realized that this person was actually a top athlete. So, if you want to succeed in a in a hobby or to make your hobby a talent or to make that talent rather a, a career, it's important that you also don't neglect the academic aspects. Because even out there, they would want to say, yes, you are good in this, but how smart are you? Yeah. So as parents, I think you'd probably want to say to parents, don't just say the hobby is enough. The child still needs to be smart enough or at least open-minded. Yeah. yeah. Because I say that because we've established that you and I both believe in God and we believe that God has gifted us talents and skills that come to us naturally. Yes. And I'd like to think, looking at prominent people or people who are successful, that they are where they are because they pursued that line which is yeah. something that comes naturally to them and all they had to do was build on it and that is what was given to them so that they're able yeah. to do it for a very long time not where like eight to five you retire and you sit yeah this one you can do it for a very long time so what do you think about that i think uh, it is important to look at a talent and see how it can pin out as a career Mm. or as something that you do for the rest of your life. It, it probably it's also, it's also important that as, um, as mentors, we identify those talents within people that we mentor or within young people or within children if it's a parent yes. and see how we can mentor that talent mm. so that it gets to where it wants to go. Um, my youngest son is, is always uh, you know, saying, I want to be a businessman. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I say, yeah, let him think like that. Mm -hmm. But then you need to start helping him to achieve that. Yeah. You need to probably start helping him to realize that he needs to start selling things, mm -hmm. selling something. Mm -hmm. and, and these probably successful people are talking about, they are running successful businesses. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's about identifying that and not laughing it off. You know, realizing that this person, they, they want to build a car that flies. Yeah. You know, someone say, I want to build a car that flies. That means that person is thinking beyond today. Mm -hmm. If Musk was able to come up with a car that is, you know, not powered by fossil fuel, an electric car, then someone could 
probably build a car that flies yeah. i've actually seen prototypes already on youtube where you see something moving and it fly, it moves to another it actually goes up mm. then it goes and lands somewhere and i'm like these are the kind of people that need to be you know supported because yeah. their mindset is really uh, futuristic in a way so i think identifying that and supporting them you know saying okay this is what he wants to do probably he needs to go to some of these institutions which are training on coding or even anything beyond that so i think it's all about supporting anything can be achieved yeah and i think that also validates the point she said about needing an academic background because as much as we can want to say and we want to do this in everything there's business attached yeah. to it so yeah. you need to to know finances you need to know business you need to learn people negotiation skills all yes. those things so i guess the academic uh, background is also very important and also like you said identify the gift in a child nurture it don't make mm -hmm. them think that it's only okay to be academic and ignore yes. your hobbies yes. or your passions yes. That's so true. yeah that's true have you read the book uh your secret the secret by Rhonda Byrne? I, I have it's been so many years um mm. but i remember reading and even watching i think when i got the book there was also a cd yeah so i remember reading that book what do you remember about it um i think there is some element of um is it attraction yes. where it speaks of that there is an attraction that takes place between what you want to achieve mm -hmm. and 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 how you go out to you know to try and get it and i always say when i think about those things and even the law of attraction mm -hmm. i always think that whatever you want to achieve you can actually plan for it mm -hmm. uh, for for me the law of attraction or the secret it's a situation where your preparation for anything basically brings that attraction if i prepare to become a multi-billionaire what i do the conversations i have the people i try to meet mm. is preparing me for that so ultimately when it happens there's that attraction so all those things they sort of come together so i always say um the, the law of attraction and the, and the preparedness mm. which people say if you are prepared and then ultimately your preparation get, gets you what you want and they call it luck Mm. It for me is the same concept with the law of, of attraction there. Yeah, because what I learned about purpose or passion from the secret is it's basically not your purpose is not something that was written yeah. for you to achieve. Yeah. It is something that makes you happy, something that you enjoy, and when you are in those spirits, you are attracting those things, yeah. and thereby things work out. The universe conspires everything for you, but then also when we look at religion what we've been taught that god already has that thing that he called us for and we are just basically living life discovering what that is so for me i'm just like i don't know where to be what to think because i don't know if maybe we can find a way to intertwine the two theories and i think um it's it's, it's true uh in a way the thing that you are supposed to do it's supposed to be the thing that gives you joy mm -hmm. i don't think god would probably say you are going to be this and that thing doesn't give you joy those two should work together there should be some harmony so ultimately you could say the thing that gives you joy is, is your purpose mm -hmm. whether you achieve that uh, straight from your your the cradle to mm -hmm. to where you are now or whether you probably make a detour from one career to actually eventually getting into your purpose one way or the other the thing that ultimately gives you the joy that's your purpose and i think it's not always a straight line yeah there are always detours until you get that thing and the times there are painful decisions to make them mm. because a lot of people are living unfulfilled lives a lot of people are not happy waking up at in at six to go to an 8 a.m job yeah they feel like they should be doing something else but unfortunately you know with the culture and the mindset in africa it's not always easy or people think it's unattainable mm -hmm. you know so it's it's something that i look at something that i see that people are just working to retire yeah. and then that is just it to life it's 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 quite sad yeah i think the unfortunate thing is um at times the people around you mm. they can be the cage for you Mm. at times your career can be a cage for you i think it's a conversation for another day mm. i was uh, really reading about why people are not in business mm. and i was also looking at the numbers and i was like wow if if i know this and 
implementing this can make me achieve this why is it that so many people some even better than me are not doing it mm. there's so many reasons so the people around you can actually make you fail to achieve what you want yeah because of the expectations their expectations okay you went to school you studied medicine be the doctor mm. gosh but i'm tired of this oh but i just re- recently realized that i'm passionate about this and if i follow this i'm going to be successful no 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 stick in there you got bills to pay you got the mortgage to pay and those things they cage you forever and those people are never happy so fortunate are people who get into a situation where calamity happens and they find themselves probably jobless mm. and then they realize oh probably i need to start pursuing my dream yeah. my you know the thing that That's gives awesome. me joy yeah so at times when things happen they actually preparing you or they actually happen so that you actually achieve what you have to achieve because like i'm saying the cage at times is difficult to come out come out of it if if nothing <laughs> supernatural happens yeah and people are also afraid of taking risks you know even the point that you're talking about the people you surround yourself with some people are negative so they impose their doubts and their fears onto you and that really narrows your mind and cripples you yes so it's also very important for you to recognize the people that you're around like oprah said show me your five friends and i'll show you your future yes. that is very true and a lot of people neglect that yeah yeah and and i think at times it's it's, it's not that the people really have anything wrong mm. it's it's a mentality where it's a situation where i saying they need to get to a point where you already are mm. they need to see what you see and they need that comfort so at times it's just an issue of trying to continuously sell the idea that okay i think i need to do this mm. even as a child it's important as a child for a child to stand out and say i don't want to study medicine yes i'm good in sciences but dad i think i want to focus on chemistry mm. i i want to to go into something different mm. i say okay my my daughter i think why don't you go and why don't you th- what do you think about biochemistry mm. and and probably if that person pursues that and probably the entrepreneurial they start their own agro processing business rather than sticking them into a environment where they would feel like they have been caged for them yeah people shouldn't be afraid to fail i think that's why people don't start anything yeah. is that you have a long life ahead of you if you fail today you can figure something out get yes. back on your feet and move on to something else so rather live that way than to live with what ifs and then in the future you are regretting not trying certain things out That's you know because when you the older you get the less time you have to be taking risks you can't yes. just abruptly leave your job you can't just you know so but when you are young you have that time like opportunity to do so so maximize on that that's that's very true that's yeah very true. I, i think the challenge we face is that the young people they want to enjoy the the job mm. you know growing up i think most people growing up they've been oh i want to be a bank teller they look at bank tellers in the past bank tellers would put on these nice uniforms you know and like wow i want to be like them then you get for instance you you just get an eight to five job maybe not even a bank teller once you're in it then you realize that oh, but this is not it mm. and they're stuck in it and 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 then you realize um i need something else mm. but you are stuck in it mm. so i think it's an issue of realizing that even as an older person there could be a moment where you choose you make a decision to say i think i can do this but like you're saying it cannot be too late yeah. you need to do it whilst you still have time yeah. yeah so mr blessing i'm going to tell them about the story that uh i was just on linkedin randomly i find mr blessing's uh message and he invited me to go and give a presentation to his first year finance students yeah And I was very shocked because you could have chosen anyone anyone literally yeah. but he I don't think you've seen me present <laughs> have you Not really no. I I only remember you in in a class when yeah. I when I was teaching it yes. Yeah so I I'm the type of person I take any opportunity if I fail I'll feel it's whatever but I was like no let me just do this let me just see And I was very anxious preparing for that but I was like you know what Mr Blessing chose me Mr Blessing chose me God chose me so yeah. I am going to do this and let's see what I'm meant to learn what's meant to come out of this yeah. so I really thank you so much for that opportunity that you've given me cuz look here I'm speaking we are talking <laughs> maybe that did something That's you true. know maybe that it sparked something in me so yeah. I want to know that for you 
who was that person for you? Because even today, you're the very first person I'm interviewing for a show. Okay. I don't even think it's a coincidence anymore. <laughs> okay. So who was that person for you? Well, I think uh, maybe before I answer that question, yeah. I'm, I'm one person who believes in the underdog. Mm. So given a chance to choose a, a, a one person, I always choose the person that will get the biggest impact. Mm. So the underdog, the one who probably is, 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 is um, no experience, for instance, or the one who actually needs the exposure. Yeah. So I would say I've helped, I think probably more than 100 people get jobs in my life. Mm, okay. More than 100 people. Mm. Just this week, I was also shouting at someone on LinkedIn to say, why is it that you check your mail after two, three days? I was mm. looking for a CV the other day and I've sent someone else. Mm. So I'm basically someone who always believes that as Africa, we need to support each other. Yeah. As, as Botswana, as business people, we need mm. to support each other, especially the small businesses. Buy them, buy the goods they sell, buy the product they sell, buy their service. Don't always go to the big ones. So so that mentality, I think really for me, it, it came from my, my background where I was given opportunities. Um, there are so many people. I remember at one point a neighbor he, he comes home and he says um, there's an opportunity to to train more like a relief teacher mm -hmm. for a was it a three month period and that opportunity opened many opportunities for me because it allowed me to actually raise funds for my first semester on college I was able to have enough pocket money and all that kind of thing but looking at that person who gave me the chance and even a neighbor probably before that a neighbor would just say ah you have always grown up as a bookworm or something like that i want you to come and train my children mm. so this whole holiday my children will be here i think there are about four or five kids you, the, most of them were in secondary school then yeah. a few in primary i want to give you this tender in god to, mm. to teach these kids so i was also on the long break after my high school and i was like okay in the morning i'll just wake up and then um, and then go to their house spend mm. almost the whole day go home for lunch come back after lunch and and probably that brought the entrepreneurial thing within me mm. so i would say those two instances those are people who gave me a chance yeah. yeah and i think we should do that as human beings for a lot of people when yeah. you see even just with a friend when you see a certain skill or uh, a certain strength yeah. that somebody has Try to give them opportunities to unleash more of that positivity make them believe that they can do it even if they are doubting themselves and they've never done it before That's even cool. if you don't know that they can just it's important for people to learn how to put themselves out there because that's when you learn more about yourself yes about yourself and that's when you learn more about what you can do, what you can't do, your strengths and your weaknesses and that's how you grow as a human being. That's true. Yeah. I, I think in addition to that, I always take difficult assignments, mm. not for the purposes of, um, of really excelling at it, but I take that as a chance to learn new things. Mm. So the other day I was talking to someone, they were asking me, what do you really do? Mm. And I said, I, I do a lot of things. Right now, there are 16 things I am planning to do. Mm -hmm. when, and when I say 16 things, you could think of 16 companies. Mm. You get the point? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I, I was telling them that you, you need to, to be able to, 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 to get learning opportunities from difficult assignments. Yeah. You know, when someone asks you, can you do this? Or can you, can you talk about this? It's an opportunity for you to learn. Do not always shy away from that. Yeah. Get it as a chance to empower yourself. Because before you do that thing, you go behind the scenes, you immerse yourself, you, you study, you mm. prepare. When you're doing that, it's a, it's a free short course. Mm. And later on, people are actually looking for you as a guru or as an expert. Yeah. So let's always embrace those opportunities to do difficult things yeah. because we learn out of those. I watch Mpumile Dwaba a lot. I don't know if you know Mpumile Dwaba, but uh, she's a digital content creator okay. and she's more based on wisdom. Like she has a show called Wisdom and Wellness. And she was speaking with someone. She was saying, uh, be discomfortable for you to be, be uncomfortable for you to be comfortable. Yes. Because you discovering what you're good at is a very uncomfortable process yes. because yes. you are learning a lot about yourself, you're challenging yourself, but then eventually you become comfortable. You're yeah. getting out of your comfort zone to enter into another comfort zone. That's and 
I think people feel like when there's a lot of friction or when you're anxious, stop, no. Mm. Eventually, you'll become good at it and it won't be, you won't be trying hard anymore. That's very true. Yeah. I agree with so, that. in closing, what word of advice do you have for our viewers? Well, I think um, being an inspirational speaker, I think the last award I won where I was working was uh, being an inspirational speaker or trainer. Mm -hmm. uh, so I always want to speak things that uh, transform people's lives. So what I would say is that um, you can be whatever you want to be. The only problem is that we are not thinking about who we want to be. I, I always ask someone when someone says, I, I want to start a business. The first thing I ask them is, when you are most successful, who are you? Mm. Where are you? What are you doing? How big are you? The reason I ask that is because I'm basically pushing them, that person to the, to the excellence, to the edge of, of who they can be. So that they then start thinking about, okay, so I can envision this. Because Africa is a problem of small is beautiful. Mm. We, we, we all want to be small. Recently, I was at, at the career, at the consumer fair, mm -hmm. and there was this hall which had a lot of small businesses. I was talking to someone there and I was saying, what are your plans? What is it that you want to achieve? How much financial resources are you looking for? Mm -hmm. And I was saying, the problem with you small business, all of you here, you are looking at your successful prototypes, whether it's a sauce, whether it's a, a honey and what, or whatever you are producing. You are happy with it. You are small and you are smiling, but that's not all of it. Mm. So that's why I asked the question, who are you when you are most successful? Yeah. Where are you? How much resources do you have? So I sort of jolt people to think big. So I basically say, you need to think big. You need to look at yourself as being able to achieve anything. I'm also looking at myself as being able to achieve anything. The success that we want, we actually have to start working on it today. Mm. Success is not a one-day wonder. I always talk of the J curve. You start somewhere, you go down, it's painful, it's painful, it's painful. If you stick in with the pain, soon you're going to turn and start moving up. The letter J, it goes down, then up. So think about it. Each time you are sticking in there, trying to run your business, small as it is, um, and things are tough, people are not supporting you, you're talking to friends, you know, you're just getting that negativity. Stick in there very soon, that J curve will turn up and yeah. that's your success. Personally, if I start a business, I'm never going to think of it as a small and medium enterprise yeah. because that's what can limit your mind. Yes. When you're thinking, okay, I'm small, then you do small things. Yes. But if in your mind, even though you're small in reality, but if yeah. in your mind you're thinking of your business as a big business, Definitely. that is what really opens up your eyes and broadens your mind. Yeah. You know, so yeah, being visionary as well is also very important. That's what gives you direction in life. That's very true. Yeah. That's so Mr. True. Blessing, Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. Thank you for making the time to be here and to help me help him help everybody else and give us a word of advice on how to move on in life. It's a pleasure. Thank Thanks you. for having me here. Mm. Cheers. All right. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, guys. Yes. Until next time. <laughs>